Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel, and I got a couple topics for you in this latest Moon Lambo hot jam. And uh, how about talking a little bit more about additional uh, corruption from the SEC? There's something fishy here, and so I, I'm not going to go so far as to make a claim that there's anything illegal occurring. Uh, not that it would surprise me if there were. But I'm not going to make that claim because there isn't sufficient evidence. But what I'm going to share with you in this video, it's it's just like all of the facts and details are, are piling up here into something that at the bare minimum has disgusting repulsive optics. So I'll share with you that. And also I've got a fun uh, critical thinking exercise having to do with XRP and its utility. There's a very popular... Um, YouTuber uh, who uh, who says that, no, nah, XRP, it's not going to solve the global problem you think it is. And, and by the way, that would be a serious problem if it weren't, because my investment thesis for the long haul, anyway, is that utility matters and will win the day. In the short term, I, I acknowledge nobody cares about fundamentals except for like me and maybe you. <laughs> That's probably about it. But uh, utility matters and will win the day ultimately. And so if this gentleman is correct, then XRP is not going to be here if you fast forward another whatever, whether it's five or ten years, whatever it is, XRP will go the way of the dodo, my favorite extinct avian creature. But I don't believe that's going to happen. Now, I do want to be clear before we go any further that I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast making YouTube videos all up on the web, and that's, that's a hobby. That's all that's going on here. Uh, so into this, so this uh, this news actually comes from Crypto Law, uh, crypto-law.us, and uh, their Twitter handle is uh, Crypto Law US. This was created by Attorney John Deaton, Pro XRP Attorney John Deaton. He is the individual that is in the process of getting a class action lawsuit going against the SEC for the damages that they've caused to XRP holders as a result of nonsensically litigating with Ripple the company. And uh, he's also seeking to intervene in the case of the SEC versus Ripple. So we, uh, we'll we we'll have a verdict on that uh, sooner than later. So stay tuned on that one. I'm hoping it happens. I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic, but you never know. But uh, I've reported on additional, um, additional instances of what may at least just optically appear to be something shady going on. At the bare minimum, optics don't look good. I've highlighted... Um, for instance, Bill Hinman, a former SEC director who worked at a law firm which had interests in Ethereum specifically, then he worked at the SEC, uh, ch changed a policy within the SEC, uh, which cleared up Ethereum. So it's a, you know it's a, a, a go forward basis. No longer uh, it, it could be could it be declared a security. Now technically fine, that's not legally binding or anything like that. But it was stated by the SEC. They're probably not going to go back on that. It was so public. And so uh, Bill Hinman, who, by the way, shouldn't have had anything to do with that particular topic. He just declared it so. And uh, and so then he was getting, and he's getting, by the way, check this out. He was getting paid by his law for millions of dollars while he was working at the SEC. And he pushed forward uh, th this, uh, this SEC position that favored his law firm while he was getting paid by his law firm. Then when he, uh, when his term with the, uh, with the SEC was up, he went back and worked for the law firm again. <laughs> it's like the SEC was like a, a revolving door for for like the uh, Ethereum Alliance or whatever the hell it's called. It's in here. I, I forget. But uh, it's just ridiculous. And there's a similar story with Jay Clayton, too. And so now we have another one. Take a look at this from Crypto Law. Breaking. Mark Berger, who led the SEC in filing the case against Ripple on Jay Clayton's last day as SEC chair, has a new job. Guess where? Simpson Thatcher. Now, uh, Simpson Thatcher, let me jump in here. Simpson Thatcher, that is the law firm that Bill Hinman, former SEC director, uh, used to work for, then worked at the SEC, and then, went back, and then went back to work for him again. Same freaking law firm. Well, isn't this a little bit convenient here? Uh, anyway, crypto law continues. Berger's last big act before leaving the SEC was filing the Ripple lawsuit. Which, had, which led to delisting slash suspension of XRP on exchange platforms and panic selling by retail holders. Simpson Thatcher sits on the Ethereum Enterprise Alliance, 
uh, took the biggest mining equipment company public and paid William Hinman $1.6 million a year while he was the SEC Director of Corporate Finance, announcing that Ethereum was not a security. Shady stuff, guys. What role did Mark Berger play in the Ethereum public statements by, uh, by Hinman while preparing the last-minute lawsuit on XRP before both took jobs as partners at Simpson Thatcher? Well, wouldn't you love to know? I'd love to know. And that's why I said, at a minimum, this looks shady. This looks like it potentially could be uh, something that's corrupt. The optics are not good. I can't make the claim that it is because there isn't sufficient evidence, but... <laughs> It's pretty reason to qu reasonable to, at a minimum, question this, don't you think? I sure as hell do. This does not pass the smell test. It absolutely does not. And, and, and then you go back, and I'm not going to go through in this video. I've, I've gone through it ad nauseum at this point. But when Bill Hedman broke down the criteria that they cited as crucial in determining that Ethereum is not a security, that criteria lined up extremely well with factually what is the case for XRP. Yet, XRP and Ripple didn't, get the, didn't really get the red carpet rolled out for them. Probably because Simpson Thatcher, their law firm, didn't have a vested interest in Ripple and or XRP. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> doesn't pass the smell test, guys. Come on, it just doesn't pass the smell test. Attorney John Deaton wrote this. I'm sure he, referencing Mark Berger, I'm sure he and Henman and Clayton, Clayton never talked about future opportunities related to crypto and ETH and Bitcoin. Oh, I'm sure of it too. <laughs> of course they did. That's the point. All right, into this now. Um, and uh, shout out to Zerpsy who ultimately tagged me in this thread here. Uh, and so he had a question. So there's an individual named Mark Moss. Um, I, I wasn't familiar with this, this gentleman, but um, he's got 25 followers uh, on Twitter. And uh, his little bio here reads as follows. Studying history to predict the future, sound money advocate, freedom maximalist, uh, privacy, money, and of course, Bitcoin, content creator, YouTube, and podcast. And so it turns out he has a YouTube channel with 246,000 subscribers. So props to him. Uh, that's, that's not easy to get to. So uh, kudos right there. So he's, he's probably a rather sharp individual that knows his stuff in a general sense with the type of stuff that he covers. But he said some stuff about XRP that I, I know just doesn't make sense. And so nothing against him personally, but I do want to share this thread and just so we can engage in a little bit of critical thinking. And um, I, I, so ultimately, I was tagged in this and I did jump in and share my piece. Um, and I haven't like Mark Moss, if he saw this, he has not responded to this point. Uh, so either he didn't see it or he doesn't want to jump back in, which is disappointing because I'd love to have a back and forth of them. Anybody that is bold enough to say the things that he said about XRP, and I've seen much worse. I mean, I, I just think that, you know, maybe um, he could use a little bit more of like a, a better understanding of the pain points within the correspondent banking system before jumping to some of the conclusions that he didn't having a, a what seems to me to be a pretty f firm opinion here. Um, and so I, I, I love having back and forth like, like this, but here's what Zerpsy wrote. He tagged, uh, Mark Moss and wrote the following. So apparently this guy also has a, a an email th a thing that he sends out to subscribers. And so Zerpsy wrote the following, enjoyed your email today, interested in your thoughts on XRP and Ripple in light of what you said. And here's a quote from the piece that he wrote. Uh, when these countries have widely accepted digital currencies, they won't need the U.S. dollar and they won't need SWIFT, right? Okay, and so um, Mark Moss jumped in. So that's pretty clear, right? You can see why Zerpsy's asking that. I Hopefully I don't need to spell that. Just in case, there actually are a lot of new subscribers. Maybe I should. You know, SWIFT is, the, is what's, uh, you know, the entity within the legacy financial system that makes it possible to convert one fiat currency to another and move money around the planet. And so they have a, an archaic messaging system, which they actually did recently update finally once Ripple started uh, competing against them. They're like, oh yeah, we've got, uh, we're the incumbent, we've been lazy for decades and decades, but now there's this Ripple company. And then they started moving and they have a much better messaging system than they did. But for the settlement portion, they actually do not have a solution, which is interesting here. Now, um, you know, if you, if you think that Bitcoin's going to take over the world, and I'm not sure that Mark, Mark Moss necessarily thinks that, but if you're of the type that everybody's going to use one form of payment for everything, 
Well, then, yeah, you, you don't need SWIFT. You don't need the U.S. dollar. It's just going to be Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. But to me, that's a fantasy land. So I don't know. I don't want to put words in his mouth. I don't know if he believes that. Um, I hear people, some people say that, the Bitcoin maxi types. I think that that's an unsophisticated lollipop land version of a future that will never come to pass. Like, it's just, it's, it's never going to be a thing. Um, <clears throat> and so here's what Mark Moss wrote. Why would any government use someone else's private blockchain especially when they could just spin up a forked copy and go in a day. And so let me pause right there. Um, if, if he thinks that the XRP ledger is a private blockchain, he needs to do more homework on the XRP ledger. The XRP ledger is, uh, is provably decentralized. There is no central point of failure. And if you think that Ripple runs it, uh, just know that they do not have any special permissions over the XRP ledger. They run 16% of UNL validators. There, there's nothing going on there. Right, in, in terms of special privileges or permissions, there just isn't. Um, and so Zerpsy saw that and responded with the following. Hey, Mark, you don't see any benefit to the relationships and bridges built by Ripple to encourage use of the XRP ledger? Question mark. And then Zerpsy tagged me and wrote thoughts? Question mark. And so Zerpsy, thank you very much for tagging me. I think it's fun to think through this stuff, and I appreciate having an opportunity to chime in and share my piece on this. And... Uh, and Mark Moss did write back to Xerpsy and said, no, who owns the relationships? The IMF, central banks, national banks, they can spin up a brand new one in an instant, and they already are. And so there you go. You can spin up a new cryptocurrency, therefore XRP not needed. I've been uh, battling these, uh, battling these uh, arguments for, for literally years at this point. And, and I'll tell you what, when I jumped into the world of crypto in November 2017, this was one of the many questions that I had, because if I was going to, you know, continue putting money in XRP, I, I wanted to see, okay, is like, what are the competitors? Does this actually make sense? How easy would it be to take down? How easy would it be, would it be for another company to jump in and replicate what Ripple's doing? All, all these questions, perfectly reasonable stuff to ask. And so I, I exhaustively looked into this and I ended up finding all the answers that I was seeking. It took a really long time to uh, put everything together, but I did figure it out. And so here's what I wrote to Mark Moss, because frankly, you know, you can't, you can't just spin up a new cryptocurrency and it takes over XRP because reasons, you know? And so here's what I wrote. This is incorrect. Cryptocurrencies don't interoperate on their own. You can make a new crypto or clone XRP today, and that doesn't solve the problem. Any brand new crypto at inception will be worth $0 and have no liquidity. In order for a new crypto to fill this role, hundreds if not thousands of new markets will need to be created. This won't happen on its own. Uh, and so to be clear, what I'm talking about there is in order for a bridge currency to, to functionally work, it has to have an open market price and, uh, and it, it, uh, it has to uh, have liquidity. And if it doesn't have an open market price, it can be backed by something, but then you've got that walled garden scenario because nobody's going to just globally adopt a, a coin that is to the benefit of somebody else in a different uh, region, you know, whether it's for geopolitical reasons, whatever it may be, you're not going to get that. And so you're already seeing friction like that in the world today. And so if you, uh, you know, have the same underlying problems geopolitically and from a trust perspective, but you just put it on new technology, you haven't solved the problem. You, you simply have not. And so, you know, you, if you're if you have a new cryptocurrency and it's worth zero dollars on the open market, that's a problem because you can't move money around the planet. Now, if you have it, if you have a, a, a cryptocurrency that is backed by something, you know, it's, it's like a bank coin or a central bank digital currency, uh, well, okay, but then it's effectively the same as the the like say it's the United States dollar. Well, then it's the same as the United States dollar. And so again, you still have the same trust issues. So even if you have, have uh, something that's technologically sufficient, you haven't solved for that. And so then I I, I wrote the problem. I, I'm sorry, I wrote the following rather. Um, also, a, a centralized crypto, no matter the underlying tech, does not address the core issue of trust in the correspondent banking system. Even if you overcome those hurdles, who is going to make this happen? Who will create sufficient global liquidity and how? Who will create software to connect all corridors? Who will onboard new customers and how will they be acquired? Who will offer customer support? How will these business activities be funded? How will this business be profitable? 
And so, and so that's, that's all that I wrote. And, and Mark never jumped back in, but I, I think people, um, it's like, they start thinking on the, on the like, mechanically, how, how would this work? Like XRP, you just think, okay, well it's, it's doing its thing, but you could throw any other crypto in there. But then when you start uh, actually thinking through it logically, like, okay, what would that entail? It all falls apart because you have to have a profitable business model to do that. And, and so Ripple came up with one. And so you could say, well, another company could come along and do what Ripple's doing. And I'd say, fine, competition, go for it. Maybe I'll invest in both. But if you think that a cryptocurrency is just going to come along and it's, it's uh, you know, it, maybe whether it's a central bank digital currency or something like this, something you can't even invest in, like you don't understand the trust problems, which is a major pain point within the correspondent banking system. So that's not an actual solution. So um, if he does end up um, writing back, uh, then I'll, I'll be happy to continue the conversation with him and, and and just get a better feel for what he understands to this point. But um, And I, I mean no insult to him whatsoever, but uh, he's frankly just w way off base. And I, I think he just needs some more information becoming, before coming to the, the firm conclusion that he seems to have come to. But uh, that's where we're at right now. So um, I'll go ahead and wrap up there, though. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.